Welcome back, DP Review TV viewers. It's Jordan Drake, so you all know what that means. We're gonna be talking about video. Now, the Fuji X-T3 was just announced, and I actually shot our X-T3 preview on this camera, and I was blown away not just by the quality of the video we got off of it, but also the handling. So it got me thinking a little bit. The GH5 is my favorite hybrid camera, a camera I can use primarily for video, but in a pinch, it's a very capable stills camera. This is probably the best competition I've seen. Now, the GH5S is my favorite mirrorless image quality for video, but it's not a great stills camera. So we're gonna let that film me right now. And I wanna talk about the GH5 versus the Fuji X-T3. If you're into video, what's gonna be the better option? So let's start things out with the straight out of camera image. When I want quick delivery, I use Panasonic 709-like profile. I've been using it for a couple years now. I absolutely love it. But Fuji has the Eterna profile that I fell in love with with the X-H1. And looking at the skin tones on these two cameras together, I gotta give an edge to the Eterna. This is closer to what I would actually wanna deliver straight out of camera. If you need quick turnaround, the X-T3 I think is gonna be the best option here. Now both the GH5 and the X-T3 will record log internally in 10-bit, although it is 420 compression when you're using the X-T3. But looking at the log profiles on both of them, I'd say dynamic range is very, very similar, although the X-T3 does have slightly cleaner shadows if you're bringing those up. That said, however, if I'm hand grading these, I found I had a much easier time getting good color out of the Panasonic. With the Fuji, I really felt like I always had to use either the Eterna or the standard F-Log LUT that Fuji provides. Had a tough time grading it from scratch by hand. That's something to be aware of. Looking at high ISO performance between these two cameras, if we match up our ISOs exactly, you can see the Fuji is definitely a cleaner image, and that's not surprising at all considering it's a larger sensor. But remember too, you will be fighting with that shallower depth of field in some shots. So I've actually matched depth of field so we have a little bit more to work with. So the Fuji is rolling at one stop higher ISO, and you can see the noise is identical. So if you're looking to get more depth of field in your shot, which is usually what I'm looking for as opposed to shallower depth of field, you're gonna get effectively the same image out of these two cameras. Now both the X-T3 and the GH5 give you the option to shoot either inter-frame compression where it's going to draw just the difference between the frames or all-eye compression where it's actually going to draw every single frame 24 or 30 times a second. Now, we're not gonna see much of a difference with motion if we're shooting all eye because it's drawing everything. But if you use the interframe, here I'm comparing Panasonic's at 150 megabits per second, 10 bit 422, compared to 200 megabits per second on the Fuji, 10 bit 420. So we're definitely packing more information into the Panasonic, but looking at these water tests here, we're still finding they're almost an identical image coming right out of them. And this interframe compression has gotten so good at this point, this is generally the way I'd shoot, except that when you're editing, this is going to be way harder on the machine. The X-T3 is shooting H.265 compression. You need a beast of a machine to work with it. And that's the reason I would shoot all eye compression most of the time. Not so much for quality, but because it's way easier on your editing machine. Autofocus performance is something I really wanted to test because the Fuji X-H1 actually had a pretty decent system. And you may have heard a couple people talking about the autofocus performance or lack thereof on the Panasonic GH5. And I gotta say, if you're using face detect on this, the X-T3 absolutely kills it. Uh, we used that for the entire X-T3 preview, did a great job. Only drawback really is you have to keep the focus point on your subject if it's not a face. Where Panasonic, we do get subject tracking with that, but I do find it's a little inconsistent tends to wobble a little bit. Overall, I would just have to give the edge to the X-T3 for autofocus performance. So I was really impressed with the Fuji X-T3, but let's not discount all the other advantages that the GH5 has. Fully articulating screen, slower slow motion on it, waveforms, vector scopes, custom LUTs, an XLR adapter. It's a much more usable professional video tool. But how crazy is it that three years ago we were saying Fuji was by far the worst for video, and now I'm very seriously looking at using an X-T3 for some of my own productions. So these are just my first impressions comparing the GH5 to the X-T3. Don't forget this is still a pre-production camera. We'll have a lot more information in the full review once we can put a production camera through its paces. But hopefully you enjoyed this. Don't forget, follow me on Twitter and I guess Chris too if you must. Check us out on Instagram as well. And don't forget to subscribe because we're going to have that full review coming up very shortly. Thanks so much for watching guys. We'll see you all soon and God I love this camera.